Good evening, everybody. I'm your new neighbor. How are you? <laughs> we are really excited to be here. I, I got to tell you, I'm addicted to the South Side and clearly College Park. This is, we're thrilled, thrilled to be here. So thank you for having us. It's a, it's a great honor. Everybody that we have dealt with uh, to date has been amazing. It started with Mercedes Miller, of course, and Giannis, and Jason, and all the folks over here at the GICC. Uh, the mayor has been great. The council has been great. Mayor-elect, we look forward to working with you. Artie has been great. Terrence, it just I can't speak to how wonderful the people in this room are and how welcome they've made the Atlanta Dream feel. So thank you to all of you for having us here. So congratulations to all of you. Thank you. But it's my job as president of the Dream to do two things. One, to introduce our speaker, but two, to get you to be involved in the Atlanta Dream. All of you are business owners. All of you understand the importance of business and getting people into your businesses. Our objective is to bring as many people to College Park as possible. The arena seats about 3,500. That's our objective 18 times a year plus playoffs, plus a championship, Renee, if we can get there, right? <laughs> We need you guys to get involved. How many have been to an Atlanta Dream game before? Raise your hand, be honest. All right. How many are gonna to come to College Park and see the Atlanta Dream play? All right. That's important to us. So, you will find when you leave a little gift card that tells you about our ticket prices, and this is my opinion, okay, if I were you, of course, I would buy a couple tickets for my staff and for my people, and I'd reward them and have them come to games and see this product. You're talking about the best 144 athletes in the world at what they do, the very best, the very best. So, I entice you through my words to say it's better than anything that you'll see. It's amazing product. I want you all to come out and enjoy it. So thank you very much. Let me tell you a little bit about our speaker. Renee Montgomery, I've known for a very long time. Renee went to the University of Connecticut, where I went to the University of Connecticut. Of course, she's a lot younger than I am. I'm sure she will tell you that or remind you of that. Uh, Renee was drafted number four overall in 2009. She had already won a championship at the University of Connecticut and she was drafted by the Minnesota Lynx. I actually was the GM in Connecticut and I traded for Renee to come and play for me in 2010. And then in 2015 I traded Renee to Seattle. Sorry Renee. Uh, and then when I came to Atlanta to run this team, we brought Renee back and she's been with us for two years going into her third season. Renee is very active in the community. She has the Renee Montgomery Foundation. She was a McDonald's All-American. She's a Gatorade Player of the Year. She's won two championships at uh, Minnesota in the WNBA. She's been a WNBA All-Star. She's all everything. She's an amazing commentator. She does. She works with Petri TV and she does Skyhawks color commentary. So you can see her on television here locally. And she's very active in the community. She's an amazing individual. I hope you'll enjoy her as much as we do. Please welcome Renee Montgomery after this video. Please welcome Renee Montgomery. Come on up, Renee. All right. Well, you guys didn't get to see any of my highlights, but that's okay. And let me, while I'm getting my papers together, because I know there's a teleprompter, I just don't trust electronics sometimes. Okay, so we need to start practicing. I'm Renee Montgomery of the Atlanta Dream, and I'm gonna be playing next door in the summer, so we gotta practice clapping. Your claps, I, I wanna get you ready for the game. Y'all's claps are a little bit too proper. Can we get like a good round of applause and see what's, okay, okay. <laughs> All right, I had, to just, I had to just make sure you could do it, because I need you to do that throughout my speech right now, make me feel good about being up here, okay? Okay, thank you. <laughs> Yes, you got it. Okay, so basketball started out being the love of my, my life. So imagine doing the same thing your whole life. I mean, your whole life, think about this. Imagine starting at the age of six when you found the love of the game. Then this love grew to your junior high years and your high school years. And then you realized, I can play this in college and get a free education. Then imagine you could play this game and they're actually gonna pay me to do it. So imagine playing this game from the age of six years old all the way into your adulthood. Now I've been told I have a great basketball pedigree and people say this because I've won a championship or played in a championship at every level. In the AAU Nationals we were in the championship game, the same in junior high. 
Chris told you a lot of this, but in high school, I won three out of the four years. Then I went on to UConn to win a national championship, and I won two championships in the WNBA, and I'm looking for my third here with Atlanta in College Park. <laughs> Now, I say all that to show you how basketball can almost feel like it's an athlete's purpose. Winning is our only goal. So we go to sleep thinking about it, we wake up thinking about it. Imagine this one thing being a large part of your whole identity. Now imagine that one of those things that you love the most in the world can be taken away in one step. Just one step. One step until you have to wait seven months until you can do this thing you love again. One step until you might not ever be able to do it again. This is the life of an athlete. The life of an athlete means rehabbing for months, not knowing if you'll be the same player you were before you got hurt. The life of an athlete means you have to put yourself out there to be critiqued every day, and I know you guys know about the trolls on the internet. So also being the life of an athlete means you could do everything right and still take that one wrong step. So why am I piloting my way forward? Because I'm that kid, I'm that athlete, and I'm always one step away. Now, do I think about that while I'm playing? No, of course not, but it is a reality. The good news is, basketball is so much more than what goes on on the court. I've gained teammates that have turned into lifelong friends, I've become a role model, and let's be frank, I've been afforded the opportunity to live a nice lifestyle. You guys can. <laughs> all right, so as a female athlete, I love all of those things, but I have to think about what happens after the ball goes through the net the last time. So I, as I go through this journey, I feel it's my responsibility to think of how can I pilot the way forward for the younger generation? My solution, I started my own foundation. Now it took me months, but I came up with the most creative, and descriptive title I could think of for my foundation. The Renee Montgomery Foundation. <laughs> Booker T. Washington said, if you want to lift yourself up, try lifting up someone else. So after I came up with the name, I began to think, what do I want my foundation to accomplish? All that kept popping in my mind is that I wanted to spread positivity. Then I started to think, now how can I spread positivity to the people? One of the goals of my foundation is to promote discipline, teamwork, self-confidence, and work ethic in young athletes and also and especially in girls. These are very important skills that are vital to everyday life in general. Now young female athletes' love for the game is just not the same as it used to be. So Nike created a program called the Game Girls because a lot of girls around the age of 12 just stopped playing sports. This means that the girls were not learning the important skills, discipline, teamwork, self-confidence, and work ethic, and the mayor talked about teamwork before, but they won't learn those skills because they won't be playing sports. Now this skill set is vital for success in everyday life. Junior R.M., a head coach of UConn, was quoted saying, bottom line is, you're either a risk taker or you're not, and if you don't take risk, you won't win big. This quote is what inspired me to implement the Let's Go Pro, despite the daunting task of funding it. <clears throat> Let's Go Pro is an initiative designed to showcase women's sports, but more specifically, women's professional sports. Now, I started with my home state, because in West Virginia, we don't have any professional sports teams in the state. None, not NBA, not NFL, not MLB, nothing. So a lot of the people that are born in West Virginia and raised in West Virginia, they never leave the state. There's a lot of things, apparently there's a lot of things that go on into bringing a large group of people from one state to the next. Who knew? I didn't know. But there's a long line of tasks, but the first thing I had to do was raise funds for it. Now, it sounded good, and I told my snook, which is my mom, this is gonna be easy getting people to support it. It's such a great idea. Boy, was I wrong. <laughs> Michelle Obama once said, it's not about the amount of money you make, it's about the difference you make in people's lives. So everyone knows fundraising is no fun, and I found out the hard way that it is really hard to get someone to cut a check. 
I'm sure Paul, yeah, I got a lot of yeses for that. We're in the politics area. so. But I stayed the course, and I was able to fund the whole event, the bus ride, the meals, the hotel stay, the game tickets. And in case you're watching this, and anybody that might be watching this, shout out to Eat Clean Bro and Commodity Cables, because those were the sponsors that took a chance on me to make my very first initiative a big success. And as I said, I'm a dreamer, and their funding allowed me to expose 60 people to a professional sports game. Now, I received feedback from a lot of the participants, many of whom did not follow women's basketball before the trip and now are avid fans and advocates for the game. I'm going to pause for applause. Thanks. So one of the participants said he never knew what all the fuss was about traveling, but now that he's been to Atlanta, he gets it. I'll be doing the same initiative annually because that's the exact change I want to make. Now, having said that, I'd be crazy to not take this opportunity for a shameless plug. In 2020, I have some really exciting events coming up with my foundation, but they cost money. So if you would like to help me change people's lives, you can go to ReneeMontgomeryFoundation.org. Now, after this first initiative, I went from not only wanting to inspire others to grow the women's game, but also to encourage the younger generation. I wanted to leave a legacy that would be a roadmap for them. A legacy. Like, what does that even mean? I mean, I've heard it all the time, and I know the gist of it, so me being me, I asked Siri to define it. I didn't, I didn't really like Siri's definition, so I went searching on Google <clears throat> and legacy. A legacy is the story of someone's life, the things they did, places they went, goals they accomplished, their failures, and more. The failures stuck out to me because when I think of what I would want my legacy to be, it's all about the good things. But when I had to sit down and think about all of my failures, I began to understand that that's actually what defines you. Remember when I talked about being in the championship game at every level? Well, I didn't win all of those games. So maybe me losing the national championship my first three years at UConn is what helped me to motivate my teammates to go undefeated my senior year. Fast forward to the pros. I will never forget game five playing with the Minnesota Lynx against the Los Angeles Sparks. We were three seconds away from going back to back. Three seconds. Now, I can still remember watching Neka Agumike gather her rebound and put the ball back in as the time expired. And maybe because we lost the way we did in 2016, it helped us to come back the next year and win the WNBA title. I don't know, maybe. And basketball can open up a whole world of opportunities on and off the court. You can coach, shouts to Coach Nikki. You can commentate, shout out to Peachtree TV, the Skyhawks, ESPN. You can get a front, off, front office position like my man Chris over here. You can be the spokesperson for a company. You can travel the world. Shout out to Delta because they're my favorite. And I've, I've done some of these things while I've a, a, been a professional athlete. But the possibilities really are endless. You just have to prepare for them. Now Benjamin, Fra Benjamin Franklin said, by preparing to fail, you are preparing, by failing to prepare, you are preparing to fail. Now, imagine being 32. And I know I have you guys imagine a lot, but I'm a dreamer, so bear with me. Okay, so imagine being 32 and you're at the top of your profession, amongst the best of the best, and then boom, you have to start over in a new career with absolutely no experience. That was my life last year when I decided to forego my substantial salary overseas to take a risk on myself. I knew I wanted to be in entertainment. It was my other childhood dream, but how? A lot of people think it's simple. Oh, you're a WNBA player. I'm sure there's a lot of people throwing you job offers. Wrong. I spent the whole last off season preparing. I enrolled in acting and improv classes. I entered into the Harvard School of Business crossover program and passed it. Thank you. I did acting and speaking engagements for free because I just was trying to get myself out there. I would tell people my aspirations and they would look at me and tell me I'm crazy. Asking for help was completely out of my comfort zone, but I had to start at level one and pilot my way forward. You see what I did there? Okay. I need y'all to appreciate this speech. It took some time to write, okay? <laughs> so, 
<clears throat> so, so, as I started this new journey, it makes me reflect on my first love. I want to make sure we're all following, because I don't want any listeners, listeners left behind. My first love is basketball. So as I started reflecting on the places basketball had taken me and to where I am now, I truly started to appreciate the things that it taught me. Discipline, teamwork, self-confidence, work ethic. I'm thankful because all of those traits I learned doing what I love is what helped me succeed in my new career path. By the way, if this is sounding like a retirement speech, I assure you it's not. I still feel like I got a lot of threes left in me, okay? But I was told to give you guys a speech, so I started reflecting, which is something I typically never do. So in closing, while reflecting, I realized basketball is still the love of my life. I'll always love it. But I want my legacy to be more. Your legacy is something you leave behind to be remembered by. So. Like, what do I want my legacy to be? What will yours be? Will my story be told? Gandhi said, the future depends on what you do today. So, what are you doing today? Thank you. We well, have since retired from his post. His legacy was uh, as demonstrated in today's presentation by distinguished colleague, Just Blaze. Allow me to reintroduce myself, my name is Ho. Five, four, three, two, one, zero. From downtown. They should have OP. I used to move snowflakes by the OZ. I guess even back then you could call me the CEO of the ROCI. Jumped out the frying pan into the fire. I beat a music biz number one supplier. Fly it in a piece of paper bearing my name. Got the fly chick in the game. You know I've seen it all before. 